question. Would the cult 1999 film Fight Club have been dramatically improved if they'd used pillows instead of fists? We'll find out in a handful of minutes. As our introduction heavily hints today, we're going to be looking at the Pillow Fight League. Having started about three years ago, the PFL tours a trifecta of New York, Toronto, and Montreal, showcasing matches between colorfully dressed and colorfully named fighters. Low pillows are their trademark, there is a fair amount of out-and-out -out wrestling going on as well. Matches go for two rounds, and each round is two minutes long. Judges sit and award points that are used to determine the winner if neither fighter manages to pin the other one for a ten count. Whenever I mentioned catching one of their shows to a friend, I was almost always greeted with either a wry grin or a look of consternation at the idea that I'm going to drag them to something like a wet t-shirt contest where the water is replaced with pillows. So, let me just make something clear up front. The girls go wild, but not like that. The women are not paid, they're doing this because they love it. They're also not a bunch of hired models. You'll see women of all sorts of different body types coming from all sorts of different careers, such as Olivia Neutron Bong, seen here in white, who works as an account manager at an IT firm. Nobody in the audience is throwing money at them, and in all the pseudo-scripted drama, I didn't detect the faintest whiff of teasing lesbian overtones. On the other hand, I'd be lying through my plutonium teeth if I didn't agree that there is some element of sex appeal to the Pillow Fight League. So, is it titillation or female empowerment? Well, I would say both, but leaning heavily towards the latter. The girls get to pick their own names, their own costumes, and they fight hard enough that they're given the relevant health insurance, plus... One time, you even got to see them beat the shit out of a guy. Though some of the drama did feel heavily scripted, the fighting certainly felt real enough from my ringside seat. Any thoughts about whether or not one of the fighters would appreciate a love letter written with macaroni and glue were pushed right out of my head as soon as the bells were rung and the pillows were swung? I gotta tell you, one of the big pluses of the PFL still being in its infancy is that it's very affordable. I ended up with ringside seats for only 10 bucks. Plus, wouldn't you rather cheer on a school teacher or a bartender instead of a greased up multi-millionaire? It's also a lot more possible to get involved with the PFL. They have periodic tryouts that are as athletic as any day of track and field, and they also, on most of their event nights, have amateur matches that you can sign up to fight in. Friggin' the Mario Brothers never have tryouts! So, what are the negatives of the Pillow Fight League? Well, it might make your girlfriend a little insecure, but if you bring her along, she'll probably end up wanting to try it out herself. Plus, on the night I was there, I felt the fights could have started a little earlier, but that's not to say that I didn't enjoy the delightful mix of Drew Carey and J. Jonah Jameson that was the PFL commissioner spouting off at the fighters. Honestly, it really just comes down to whether or not you're a fan of hooting, hollering, fun personalities, and fighting that's intense enough to be exhilarating, but tame enough that you don't feel as guilty as people who go to watch matches between quadriplegics with guns in their mouths. Ladies and gentlemen, your loyal narrator was once himself a professional pillow fighter. He was known as Soft Yet Hard, and had legends throughout the land of his hitting and, and tickling, slight touching and smelling.